Hi, Loretta. How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. You look pink. You look good. Do I? Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. you. Look, Don't look bad yourself. Because I saw you applying makeup. You're like, ah, this one is, is thinking I'm going to like put on a video or something like that. Ah, no, you have to look good. I know. You have to look yeah, good. So you thing. sound, yeah? You sound good. Yeah, like yeah. It. Like it. What's your confidence? So who, who are you? Who is Loretta? Loretta, Loretta, Loretta. Loretta is a woman that's female. Man, at this point, you have to do that. You have to put it out straight. Are you yeah. straight? Are you have to be like, oh, I'm a straight oh, woman. I'm, I'm a straight female. <laughs> straight, I'm okay. straight. Um, I'm Loretta, I'm a straight female. I am spoken word assist and also written word. I'm starting written word. Um, I am currently studying pharmacy at Makere University. I, I, I play for, I play hockey. I play field hockey for a club. It's called Kampala Hockey Club. Yes, they are hearing. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your place is full already. From the things you've told me, you're a spoken word poet. You are a written word poet. You are, you play hockey. Mm. You are a student. You're studying pharmacy at that. Mm. Do not ignore that, man. Mm. How do you get to juggle all these things in a day? Now you're here. Maybe after here, you have to go and do practice for hockey. Mm. You're from church, you told me. Mm. Maybe you have to go and read your books, man. Yeah. I cannot do that in a day. How yeah. do you get to do that? Uh, honestly, I think it's just the grace of God. Because when I think about it, it's actually a lot. When, you, when, you, when someone says it back to me, mm -hmm. it's a lot. But when I'm going through it, it doesn't seem like it's a lot. Because there's a way you can section your time appropriately. Put this here, put this there. Now let's imagine that they tell you you have a show in like the next two hours and you're supposed to be in class. Mm. So what do you do? Priority, yeah, priorities. Yeah, so what yeah. do you prioritize? You have to prioritize. Uh, uh -huh. What do you take? My priority is my education, then spoken word. Ah, then I get pokey. it. I that, get those it. are my three. That's how I line them up. But I, I hope I enjoy your captain is not listening equally. to you. They're like, oh, you No, my priority. captain knows. <laughs> I've told my captain this several times. Yeah. So you've yeah. missed a lot to practice, that means. Uh, recently, yes, recently. But last year I was, I was a little recently. more Recently, what have you been working on? We need to Currently, I've just been writing, writing, studying. So writing, you're writing, studying. you're like, ah, man, I'm deep into this, so I'm going to miss practice today. You call your captain, I'm not going to appear no, today. There is what a are way. you doing? I'm writing. <laughs> no, my captain is going to eat me. <laughs> no, but the reason why, um, the reason why I stopped, I, I first put a hold on hockey was I realized that I needed to first perfect my craft. There's also something else. There's another charity thing that I'm doing. So I realized I had a lot on my plate. So I had to first remove color, remove color some parts of the plate and then I I increase my efforts. Because when you divide your efforts, huh? yeah. when you divide your efforts, yeah. we won't be giving things uh, you need to give everything a hundred percent. But when your inputs are divided, no, you won't be able possible. to give. It's not possible. To it's do that. possible. Yeah. It's possible if you exactly convince if you me, prioritize. Convince me, yeah. If you prioritize. So let's say you're going to give a hundred percent to pharmacy. Mm -hmm. You come and give a hundred percent to poetry. Mm -hmm. Give a hundred percent to hockey. You can. It's not possible. That's you why can. you have priority, a priority list. Yeah. You're like, yes. I'm going to give my education a hundred percent. Then I can give poetry like ninety percent. Hockey comes in with eighty percent. I don't know which percentage we are talking about right now. We are in degrees. But <laughs> but like a hundred percent will a yeah. hundred percent will look like this. If I am able to do a bit of poetry, yeah, for for um forty minutes or an hour mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. If I'm able to write something for an hour. A day or cramp something an hour a day that's the 100 percent i've given in my poetry oh, yeah, because I by the end know. of by the end of a month i will have a lot of content mm. and a lot of um i would have improved my skill manship my workmanship eh? i get you yeah. I get so you. it's very possible very possible that's why i feel like I'm, I'm, I'm currently in your 20s it's very important for you to try everything yeah 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 try everything find what sets your heart on fire try it don't stop until you've tried it. Give it some time. Uh, don't relax in it. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the heart of the matter today. Um, when do you start writing? When do you start performance? Uh, the spoken word performances, uh, the written word. When do you start doing this? When do you start saying that I actually have the ability to do this? Mm. I can actually go for it. And I think, um, well, I can craft my skill eventually. Mm. I'll be there. When do you start doing this? When did I start? 
That's a very good question. Okay, I started in form in my senior one. In my I didn't start in my senior one. I got the inspiration in my senior one. There's a poet. He's also one of the poetry nights called Diego Muesigua. Ah, he's the love the love poet. Right? Yeah, the love poet is super super lovely. Yeah, 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 very, yeah. it's a very good love poet. Everyone should check him out. He taught me. He 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 invited me for a show. We were friends. I was in form one. He was in form six. But who are family friends. Oh, I so guess so. He invited all of us, all his family friends, who were like neighbors at home. Not family. I think that's a family friend. He invited all of us for a show. So we went for the show. We watched the show. He was performing. My, yeah, he was performing. Oh, he had I made that show. It was called Love's Kachumbali. So it was very mind. It was Blowing. so nice. It was very exciting. Because it was the first time I was ever introduced to spoken word poetry. I always thought it was like acting, but it's acting with more emotion and everything put in one and nice diction and everything. Yes. So when I watched the show, I told him I want to learn. But you know how being a 14 year old and insecurities yeah, yeah. and everything, yeah. you're like, man, uh, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can do this. So that was the whole, whole level, ordinary level. By the time I reached form five, when I reached form five, Kagai actually came to our school, Kagai and Gobi. Yeah, yeah. So he came to our school and when he came to our school, I remembered my passion for poetry and how I loved watching poetry and how it was something I would want to do. So he came to school and I was like, ah, I can't miss this. So I went, it was an optional event. You could come if you wanted. It was held by the Writers Club at my school. So um, he came and he started teaching about poetry. He gave us a very small prompts and the prompts were very, like there were small prompts, but then you would write so much. Now he called anyone who had ever written poetry to leave the room and go get their poets. Then people who had never, including myself, people who had never, uh, he told us to, yeah, to remain behind and he gave us prompts and he made poetry so like it's like anyone can do it, which is true, anyone can do it. He made it so easy and made it, uh, he as if lessened my insecurities, he made my insecurities seem very, yeah, very meager, very small. So um, I decided to, he said now, ha, huh, from the prompts I've given you come and then perform. So we're like, okay. So we came. So you wrote, you wrote something and yeah, then he's wrote. calling you to perform. Yes. Ah, oh, I get it. Yes. So when we came and we performed just a bit, um, he chose some people. He chose like 10 people from the people who had performed and I was among. Oh, and I was like, oh yeah, exciting. <laughs> so we did some poetry thing that was very new to us. So when we were rehearsing it, it was very, he had given us the idea and he, and we, we had an idea of our own, but then he gave us another idea a very theatrical poetry idea. I hope I'm not talking for too long. <laughs> a very theatrical poem idea where we were running on stage and like it was very, um, it was very, com when you see it in practice, you're like, what are these guys doing? But when you see it on stage, because um, the stage is your subconscious, eh? when you see it on stage, it's, it's literally what is happening in your subconscious. They, they, they reflect and glue okay they glue what they are doing to your subconscious, to, your subconscious yeah. to the extent that you won't question you'll just feel so that is form five you start yeah, serious form five. work yes yeah. form five poetry then i uh, i reached form six i was so busy with school school was too much so um i decided to study okay in form six back is when i was like okay you know what let me try. Uh, let's, so I, going back to what you had talked about so you, you made these um, practices yes with yes. Peter. Yes, with Peter. So did you get to perform this? What are your friends saying? Like, are you going to really take this up? Yeah. What are your friends saying? Do you get to perform it anyway? Yes, we got at to school? perform it at school. Oh. And people were yeah. very entertained because it was our first time we were, what's the word? We were amateurs. It was our very first time. I know, the excitement that comes with that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you yes. can give it your all, 100%. Yeah. I get it. So you perform. Yeah. Form six is here. You are. You're not really into it. You're. A I am. I am still very interested, but mm -hmm. busy with school because it's school. a candidate class. So you get done with school. Yes, I get done with school. So in vacation now. Yes, in my vacation. Now in my vacation, I remembered Form One me wanted to do poetry. I said, you know what? Let me just do it. So I I hit up Diego Diego Moesigo. I'm like, hi Diego. Remember when I told you I wanted to do poetry? Now I'm very 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 interested. So he linked me up with Lusa Poet, who is literally, who literally taught me everything I know right now, Lusa Poet. So Lusa Poet, he, he, I, I linked up with him, Lusa Poet was like, okay, I have a show coming up, I have a poem, like, would you mind performing it? 
I said, whoa, okay. Now I remember in Form 5 when Kagaye came, mm. he came and made us write poetry. Now when he made us write poetry, I decided I could write. I just decided. I didn't think I could write. I decided, you know what? I can, I can write. write. <laughs> so I decided to start writing. So when I, I wrote a piece, but I had never performed it anywhere, and I really liked it. It's the one I actually performed in the next poetry night. It makes sense why you performed that, why you wrote that, because loose, the loose that I know, that's what he likes. Really? The subject matter of your piece that mm. you're going to explain to us <laughs> uh, after this. That's what he likes, because, okay, maybe the pieces that I've watched of loose, mm. of him perform, mm. that's the subject matter he's talking mm. about. Activism, so, yeah, poetry. Yeah, activity, yeah. Mm. Of, yeah, there's male, female. Yeah. He's trying to fight for the males, of course. So yeah. yours, it was the females trying yeah. to bring in the female side of the story. Yeah. Let's talk about that. So how do you get to write this and this particular thing? Because you said you wrote, you wrote it in Form 5. Yes, I wrote it in Form 5. But let's, but let's first talk about the subject matter, what it's about. Okay, um, it's about a woman who... Okay, in my Form 5, I was seeing, you know, children were always in the behind the curtains as our behind the curtains or in our bedrooms when our, like important visitors come home and stuff so i was not only in my relatives but like in other people i was seeing a lot of women tired of their marriages and like for me it didn't make sense because you chose this partner why are you tired of your marriage like and they, they realized it was it could be it could be their fault that's number one but the one I was seeing a lot was, it was usually the gentleman's fault. The gentleman, the gentleman's fault. Mm, I get it. Yeah. But again, this does not sway from the fact that it could have been the women's fault. It could be the women's fault. It must, it, <laughs> marriage is a two people contract. Yeah, yeah. So it needs both of them to work together. But I just took the point of view of the woman because mm. the stories I was hearing a lot or from the women's point of view. Now I can go and handle stories in a men's point of view. I can write a piece in a man's point of view, but that's for another day. So I wrote that piece because of what I was observing, of how I, I, I found marriage to be very interesting, how you fall in love with someone, but you enter marriage with them, and then you start to hate them. I just found that about marriage to be very confusing. So I wrote something about it. And this is one five that we're talking about and yes. seeing you getting interested in such topics would be, um, I don't know, not confusing. would be like, why? She's just young. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Exactly. And these are stories you're hearing from people. Maybe they are lying. Maybe, I don't know. That's true. That's what true. came to your thinking? You're like, uh, let me just take the woman's side and I write it from that point of view. Because the people whom I was hearing from were majorly women. Majorly women. People, people are telling me stories of their mothers at school. Because I would like, I, I enjoyed having conversations, those kinds of conversations. I hate small talk. <laughs> I hate small talk so much. So I prefer having societal conversations, conversations about what people are going through in society. And usually that's where I get the concepts to write in my pieces. Yeah. You get to know that um, when you write about something, you start identifying to it. Yeah. Yes, yes. So maybe I'm thinking if you get to have a relationship, someone is going to be like, ah, she's going to think of, about me as I identify her from the other perspective that she wrote her piece. You get my point? Yes, yes. yes. But I feel like this should go out to the audience. Like, people should understand that I'm entering a character and I have to sell that character. And I have to sell thousands of women who have been in that character before me. So, yes, people may think that, but maybe once you get to talk to me, you'll realize that I have a different view. Or I have, I, 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 I just know how to enter people's shoes well. I think, yeah. Do you believe that people can actually fall out of love? Well, you love someone, eventually you fall out of love. Yes, But you're already married. Yes. So what do you do? You have an option, of course, of divorcing. Yes. Like women do not do that. Maybe they have children. Yeah. I feel like what is going to baggage. happen to my children. Yes. So you believe that people actually fall out of love. I really do believe people fall out of love. No, I don't believe so. You don't you believe me? You have to me. convince me that. <laughs> you don't, I, yeah, I, believe, I, don't... I believe people fall in love. Mm -hmm. And the problem is sometimes people fall in love with the idea of someone. So 
if you fall in love with the idea that this person, this woman, this man is going to become like this when I marry them, without seeing it first hand from yourself, by yourself, I feel like that's when the marriage becomes toxic. If you're able to, if you're not able to have those hard conversations, to be able to find out if you're compatible enough and do the work. The problem is perhaps people, perhaps, I repeat, mm -hmm. perhaps, mm -hmm. I don't have a statistic, perhaps people sometimes sit with this human being and fall in love and, and, and enter a fairy tale and they live happily ever after. But is, is, it, is it really happily ever after? I feel like there should be more work to be put in growing yourselves, in understanding yourselves, in the conversations, in your plans, to find out if you're compatible enough instead of being at the, you know, there's a height, there's a height love gives you, yeah. there's a height yeah. affection gives you. And that sometimes people use that height to determine that, yeah, our relationship will always be at that height. No, I'll tell you why I don't believe that people fall out of love. Mm. Um, well, if I fell in love with a person, mm. well, at that point I'm falling in love with that person, who they are. Mm. And when we get married, or eventually, even if we don't get married, and actually fall out of love, what you say it is, mm. uh, I just believe it's people changing, mm. evolution happening. Mm. I just do not like them who they are right now, mm. but I still love the other person that they used to be. Mm. So I'm not falling out of love. I just do not like who they are right now. Because evolution has happened, changes have come. But you Maybe still the love person the human has become being. more. Um, yeah, I do, I do. But you just the person hate can what has happened evil, now. Devil, no, you cannot hate the other actual, person. I don't. Evil. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That is evolution. Changes have happened, but you still love the person. You're just going to move away because you hate who they've become right now. Not like you're falling out of love. I don't know if I'm making sense. You get it? It's just changes, but you still love the other person. You get me. You get my point. I think so. Yeah. I, I just don't believe that people fall out of love. They just cannot take the changes that have happened to that person. What is love? But if love? they are strong what enough, love? oh man, I cannot explain. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if, what, what I'm saying, if they are strong enough to stay here, mm. they can deal with that person. Because you, you, you have two options, moving away and staying. Mm. To love the person that you used to love and accepting who they are right now, they can kill you, I know. Mm. eventually or you can kill them you have an option of killing them oh dear <laughs> <laughs> this is going on record yeah? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah. my point so you wrote that piece you performed it it was amazing mm. it was really amazing because we had listened to diego so we are trans we are transitioning to you mm. to your point of view mm. that was really beautiful i thank must you say so much. Yeah. thank you so what when do you get to write these things? I mean, where are you? Where are you writing these things from? Um, All the other pieces that you've written, how do you get to get ideas? How do I get ideas? Usually it comes, as I said, it comes from conversation. When I speak, when I speak to someone about what's going on in their lives, and most times, okay, well, one thing about me, is that sometimes it's hard to write about what I'm going through. If I'm, you know how people find it easier to write about a very overwhelming emotion? Yeah. Overwhelming emotion. How people find it very difficult to write about, very, very easy. Like for them, when they feel that emotion, they want to go straight pen to paper and write it down. Personally, I find it extremely difficult. I can write about what I've gone through, maybe after a month I've gone, after a month after I have gone through it. So what you're, you're trying to say, the easiest way for you to write something, you generate ideas from what people are talking. Yes, what people feel, from what people, yes. Um, or what is going on in society, or what needs to be changed. But to enter my own shoes, I'm, I'm more comfortable wearing other people's shoes. And you're writing these things from their perspective or your perspective? Their perspective. Their perspective. Sometimes it can be from my perspective, looking at them Sometimes, from where I am. Sometimes, but usually it is from their perspective. Usually it's from them, What yes. if we do not, you're not in agreement with whatever they are saying? What if I'm not in agreement with That's whatever? when you get writing. I'll write, I'll write in my disagreement. <laughs> I'll write in my disagreement. That's the thing, I'll write in my disagreement. Ah, I get your point. Yes. Um, a lot is happening in society. There's a lot that is going on. We are seeing uh, marginalized people. So you as a poet, how do you come to be in like, let's say, uh, this is sex, um, I don't know, whatever they are called, the LGBT and stuff like that. There's mm. race, there's refugees. Mm. You as a poet, how do you come in to change the society? How do you come to influence these people? 
how do I come to influence this? Or maybe that's not your motive. Your motive may not be influencing, maybe entertainment. And... Yeah, yes, obviously I have to entertain because that's the use of spoken word poetry is to use entertainment to educate, hence edutainment. I don't know if you've heard of that. But I think from, from where I am, I guess I just believe I have power in the words I speak. And, in, and where I stand, I believe by speaking them, I could create a, a mental shift in someone. And that mental shift will result into conversations that need to be had. You get it. So I think I think I think that's what I, I just have to write. I just write about it. Because one thing that is certain, uh, poems are here to disrupt, yeah, or maintain how people think, mm. yeah. So I think what you're saying, yours usually disrupt people, get them to say whatever they're not supposed to say, whatever they've been keeping to themselves. Mm. So they, through your pieces, they get to say things that they could not have actually said. Is mm. that what you mean? Yeah. I guess so, I guess. In a way, yes. Like, I guess through my pieces, I am able to have, pe have people thinking. Because, you see, I, again, as I said, when someone is on stage, they immediately turn into your subconscious. Now, you already have, uh, you already have an understanding of something in your conscience. But when someone is on stage, it's as if gives you a battle between what the person is saying and you. what your views are. Mm -hmm. And that friction is wood. It's very good. It's what brings about conversation. It's what brings about change. Because when someone has that conversation, if people are mature enough not to let, get offended eh? and to just speak the truth, it enables, it enables people to have those conversations and development will occur eventually. Development, uh, change, respect for human rights, etc., etc. Et uh, let's talk about your current pieces, what you are working on, uh, what are they about? Currently. Are you producing them? Publishing them is the right time, I suppose. Um, I, I beg your pardon on that last question. Um, your current pieces. Mm. Have you any published work? Do you have any published work? Where are you performing? What are these things about the pieces that you're writing about? Same, yes. same thing as um, what you had talked about earlier. Oh. Currently, uh, some of my work is in, there's a journal, it's called Iboa Journal. There was a, forgotten its name, something called Smile. I think it's called Smile. There's my, some of my work is published there. Um, a couple of my work, I'm, I'm, I'm working on, on collections, on different collections. The work that I am working on currently, it's generally uh, my point of view. Okay, it's, it's as if I'm make-believe Uganda. I make-believe, like, if, if only it was as easy as I was saying, hmm? you know, change and development comes from ideas. Yeah, yeah, when an idea is developed, when an idea comes about, it is then assessed to see if it's realistic enough. Now me, me, my book is just full of ideas. That's, that's, that, that's my collection that I'm making Oh, you could right share with us an idea. Maybe I could buy it, you know? Buy an it idea. Yeah. Right now. Mm -hmm. What you're, you're, you're working on. my board. book. Okay. <laughs> um, I have, um, there's period poverty. Mm? Period poverty is one of the biggest problems in Uganda. Because if you see, you cannot, uh, all over Twitter, all over Facebook, all over Instagram, you cannot miss to see a poster where people are looking for funds to fight period poverty. Mm. Now, me, my idea is, why don't we find a way to make the pads in Uganda, one, make the pads accessible for people who cannot afford them. So I have a piece on that, you get? I get it. I have a piece on, currently, like the, the part I'm almost done with is how to help uh, girls who are not privileged enough, girls who are not privileged enough to get what they need to succeed. Mm -hmm. So that's one of them. That's so, one so what do we do? Again. What do we do to make them at least get something? What do we do? Again, this is make believe. <laughs> I repeat, it's make believe, but it's an idea. An idea yeah, needs to yeah. be assessed. I just, I just want to get into your mind and see what yeah. should we do? To do they that? should be made cheaper. 
And by making them cheaper, we need to find a way to, first of all, make them in Uganda, make those which are sustainable for them. If, instead of a girl spending, the, the, the question is, a girl spends 3,500 on a packet of pads every month, or two packets of pads, that's 7K. Why not find a way to make the pads as cheap as, as what? As 100. They don't need to be free. Why don't you find out to make them cheap? There's a, I think it's Scotland that has just recently made the parts cheap. Obviously, the economy of Scotland and the economy of Uganda is different. Yeah, yeah, because it, again, goes, it goes back to manufacturing. Um, yes, and all I that. Mean, production, all the costs. Mm. So what you're saying, you should come here. It should be like, <laughs> I should say, a government organization doing that. Yeah. So they should actually make them free. Yes. That's what you actually. That's what saying. I'm saying. Like, if there's any NGO out there. <laughs> Yeah, come and like that's one way you, you can help yeah. girls out instead of them worrying, spending that three five. Now that you're making that idea, can, um, do you think there are people who are going to implement it for you who can actually come on board and uh, collect some people that you can get to work with and yeah. you can start working towards? Yeah, isn't yeah. that better? That than would just be nice. creating the idea and putting it there and you're like, ah, yeah, whoever yeah. may see it, yeah, yeah, whoever it might that's concern. The thing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I am in a position to. I don't think I'm in a position to do anything about it. All I can do no, I is think write. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> Not all I can do. What I can do first is write about it, talk about it, uh, have conversations about it. Hopefully, someone who can have, who has the enough enough funds and enough connections. So you've written about it. Me. Are you going to publish the collection, right? Yes. Um, why don't you make the collection free so that people can actually get to read about it and maybe impl implement the idea? Because if you make it um, for sale, yeah. you're sure that a lot of people will buy it. So let's start with you. It starts with you. Make it free. <laughs> make it free. <laughs> if I'm able free? to get yeah. funding, no, 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 I can make it no, free. No, I mean, you're making a change. You're just sacrificing yourself. I mean, to get the funds, uh, make this collection free so that girls can actually get to read it or potential sponsors get to read it mm. and maybe that yeah. is my part okay. i played my part i get what you mean but yeah. again this is my hustle <laughs> so it goes this back to those hustle. who are making parts it's also a hustle no it's okay it's yes i understand yes. it's their hustle but what can be made to make them cheaper like it's it's like this the thing is uganda is still importing pads like why don't you make them here you get what like yeah, what I can know. be done to make them you know cheaper? once 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 a service comes to uganda let's say uh we understand Ume, umeme is going out yeah. but the moment it goes out electricity is going to be way expensive than it was do you believe that do you believe that yes yes it's going to be more expensive so if we stop uh getting pads from outside mm. the country mm. and we'll, we give it to the hands of ugandans like a company mm. like you're going to make pads they're going to make them more expensive and they're going to make you believe they'll give you a quotation that like this is what we are doing we're using this much money to actually make them yeah you get my point mm. that is how uganda is i think it only gets back to us as people yeah mm. it's not it's not money that works it's the heart yeah it's the heart that works so if we get into our heart well, like we're going to do this, then you can actually do it. I think that's it. Yeah. It's not about the money, it's about the heart. So let's look at this, uh, at poetry, as we come to a conclusion with this. How do you look at poetry from the monetary side of, of you? Monetary side Do you believe it's of... going to pay you at a point, or you're just making art for art? Or well, that's what oh, you're studying, you're like, ah, to... it's just going to be a passion, then I'll take in my pharmacy to wherever it leads me. Mm. And then art will be just art. Um, I believe I will benefit from it. I believe I'll benefit from it. Even though it's not monetary, I believe I'll benefit from it. Maybe another way I can benefit is, I believe I'll create an impact. That's number one. That would make me happy. That would make me satisfied. I believe I will, um, I will, uh, I will, I will, let young people like through okay through words through art you can make young people believe they can make it in yeah, whatever they do i get it that's another way yeah monetarily currently in uganda it's very hard to make money from poetry i'm like from where i've seen maybe someone can tell me otherwise 
you can make some money but it's very hard to make it but it is still possible if you if we as ugandans come together and go the lengths go the lengths to make poetry a respectable form of art yeah I get your point. Uh, thank you so much for being here. It's really a pleasure having you here, Loretta. Mm. What's your other name? Kansime. 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 Yes. You're from the West. Yes. Which part is that? Which part is that? Which part of the West? Kabale. Oh. Well, yeah, what's in it, I can speak some few things from there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure having you here. You're, su you're, such, you're such a dreamer and I like it. Um, thank you. I can't wait to have you again. Thank you. My pleasure.